That's an RTX 3080 being recommended for 1080p. I've got a lot of thoughts about that. Number one is obviously that's with ray tracing on. And um, should I talk about this now? Let's get me out of the way here. I'm, I'm definitely in the way. So uh, look, look, okay, okay. Uh, there's there's available storage space that my head's gonna block, okay? And then, uh, okay, the bottom line, there's obviously RAM, but I still wanna stay in the shot. And yes, Windows is an operating system. So confirmed it can run on Windows 7. Anyway. <laughs> So we're gonna jump to GPUs in a minute and also notice that this system's requir requirement chart is a lot better than what a lot of studios give us, but it is limited to just 1080p. We're only talking about 1080p 30, 1080p 60, and then with ray tracing on or with ray tracing off. Like I said, this is much better than a lot of people give us, so thank you. Although what if you wanna play at 1440p? You know, what if you wanna play at 4K? Uh, does this include DLSS? Well, I have a lot of things I can do to help you with that. So while I know some of you guys will just click on the video, look at the chart, and then move along, if you stick around here, I've got so much I can tell you about 1440p, other GPUs, other CPUs, all sorts of stuff, stick around. Anyway, let's get the quick stuff out of the way. You need 60, uh, 60 gigabytes, it'll run on a hard drive, but they're definitely recommending an SSD. And please, people, if you don't have an SSD in your computer yet, just do that. They're not that expensive these days, and for just daily use of your PC, let alone gaming, it's gonna be the best thing you could ever do if you haven't done it yet. Anyway. Uh, RAM, eight gigabyte minimum for a 30 FPS experience. They're definitely, and low settings, they're definitely recommending 16 gigabytes for moving up to high settings and a good, nice, more solid 60 FPS. And that's pretty standard these days, nothing crazy. We've seen a few games like Icarus saying 32 gigabytes RAM these days. So at least we're not seeing anything crazy there. And okay, the um, I've already explained how the chart is set up, but then what else do we have here? We've got things like a, uh, let's go to the CPUs. The CPUs are pretty simple here, and then most of you care about the GPU will jump in. So one thing I like to see here is that they're not getting too crazy with the CPU recommendations, which some games do, where they're like, as you turn up settings and resolutions, you just have to have a better CPU, and that's not really how it works. There are some graphic settings that do affect CPU usage, including ray tracing. Ray tracing does increase the CPU demand. So notice that when they go up to high ray tracing, um, they do bump up the AMD CPU a bit there to 3700X. Now, what I'd actually say here is the fact that they're saying you can get 60 FPS with RT off on these same CPUs and only bumping it up slightly with RT on just on the AMD side, tells me that these CPUs are actually probably good for more than 60 FPS, especially with um, with RT off. Now, the CPUs down here at low settings for 30 FPS, these are four core, four thread chips, although fairly modern ones. Let me give you a little more details on these CPUs and then we'll move along to the GPUs, which is probably what you'll find more interesting here. So the 3600, well, let's start with the lower end ones. Okay, so the 2300X Ryzen 3 is a four core, four thread chip from August of 2018. And the Intel Core i3-9100 is a four core, four thread chip from 2018. So what we're basically seeing here is you can play the game, but probably won't be getting a smooth 60 FPS on four core, four thread chips, as long as they're fairly good ones. Now, it's definitely clear that they're recommending you have at least a six core chip. The 8600K is six core, six thread uh, from 2017, the 3600X being six core, 12 thread from 2019. Although in these generations, usually Intel had a single core performance lead, which helped it a lot in gaming against the uh, you know competing AMD chips from a similar time period. So what I'm basically seeing here is you're not gonna be able to get away with like a really old uh, CPU and still hit a 60 FPS if their systems requirement chart here is accurate. You're gonna want at least a relatively modern six core chip for a good experience. And, let, and as you turn up things like ray tracing, it might benefit you to have you know even more cores or threads or a more modern uh, CPU. That's what I'm getting out of that. Let's move on to the video cards where I think more, most people care about. The good news here is if you just wanna play the game at 1080p low settings, 30 FPS, your 1050 Ti and your uh, AMD RX 560 are still hitting the charts. 
And then, um, and by the way, uh, that those are four gigabyte cards. So it looks like you can get by with a four gigabyte card at low settings, 1080p. Great. Now, moving up to RT off with the, um, uh, with the high settings and 60 FPS, 1080p still, we're seeing us move up to an RTX 2060 or a Vega 56. And the 2060 being a six gigabyte card, they're saying that that'll work for you. Now, where does your GPU fall in this spectrum? And then what if you wanted to target 1440p without ray tracing, it doesn't tell us. Well, here's where I can help you out quite a bit. So if we go to Tech Power Up, this isn't perfect, but they give us a relative performance chart with pretty much every GPU on here. And here is what we can do. So if we set like, for example, let's see if their recommendation makes sense, jumping from a 1050 Ti to a 2060 to go from 30 to 60 FPS and from low to high. Well, actually I think it would make a whole lot of sense because the 1050 Ti so first of all, if you want to see where does your GPU fall in comparison to that, like a 960 is fairly similar to a 1050 Ti. It's a little bit worse. You know, a GTX 760 is even worse than that, right? So you can kind of get some sort of a ballpark figure. If you're on a, uh, a 1050 rather than a 1050 Ti, again, you're at like 80% of the performance, right? So you're going to really struggle here if we're already 1080p 30. Maybe you're going down to like 720p, something like that, if you're on one of those GPUs. But then moving up the performance list here, if you're on like a 1650, that's a bit better than a 1050 Ti, but only about 25% better. So probably not good enough to hit 60 FPS at 1080p, maybe at a lower resolution. And again, we can scroll through here, like the GTX 970 is significantly stronger than a 1050 Ti, but not double. So you're probably still not hitting 60 FPS at 1080p low. And if we get all the way to like a GTX 1060, again, um, now you're, you're hitting the ballpark where like maybe you'd be hitting 60 FPS, but you're still not doubling that 30 FPS GPU recommendation. Um, I'll test out a 1060 6 gigabyte in this game if I end up getting this game. I have one to test out, so I'll be interested to see if we can do it at low settings. So again, as you scroll up, that's kind of how you read this. So if you wanted to go by their chart here and say, okay, what if I want 1080p 60 FPS low? They didn't tell us that. That's where hitting you'd be wanting to be around the 200% performance mark compared to what they're saying will get you 30 FPS, right? Because that's like a times two performance. So the GPUs on my screen right here are kind of what you'd be looking for, somewhere in this ballpark of GPUs. So if yours falls there, you're kind of in the 1080p low 60 FPS range. And then when we jump up to the um, RTX 2060 right here, sorry, we're at a 253% and right here's our Vega 64 as well, similar performance. Um, we're at like a 2.5X performance and that makes perfect sense because two times would get you from 30 to 60. And then you need that extra bit to go from low settings to high settings. So I think these, these make perfect sense in this column um, uh, as far, so, I mean, we won't know for sure until we actually benchmark it, but uh, this seems to make perfect sense to me. Okay, but what if you wanted to play at 1440p? Well, here's what we'll bust out a calculator, guys. I'm actually a math teacher. If you take 1440p pixels and divide it by 1080p pixels, you get 1.77 repeating. In other words, there's about 78% more pixels to run at 1440p than there is at 1080p. So what we're going to want to do is take the RTX 2060 as our baseline, and then we're going to need to look for a GPU that has about 78% more performance than that one. Okay, so we're going to take the RTX 2060 now as our baseline, right? And now I'm going to look for, uh, as we go up here, right, you can now get better and better performance and it's looking like we're gonna need to be in like RTX 3070 range for 1440p 60 FPS high settings, assuming that their chart here with the 2060 actually makes sense. Now, does that mean that you can't play at 1440p with a weaker GPU? Absolutely not. It just means you probably wouldn't be at the highest settings. So if you're falling in between a, tw a 2060 and a 3070, what that probably means is you are now going to have to play at reduced settings if you want 1440p 60 FPS, or use something like DLSS, 
which I'm sure if this game is, is doing ray tracing on all this NVIDIA stuff, right, that they probably have a DLSS implementation. So if your card is capable of that, if you have an RTX card, um, I don't know if this game has FSR at this point. Um, I haven't seen any info on that. Maybe you guys know in the comment sections. So anyway, that's, that's what I'd say there. And then, okay, well, what if we want to go up to 4K again without ray tracing? Well, if you want to go to 4K without ray tracing, then 4K is exactly four times the pixels of 1080p. So you would, because it doubles the 1080 and the, and the 1920, right? Both the height and the width double, increasing your area by four. So basically what I'd look at here now is I take our 2060 baseline and I'm gonna look at to see if there's something with like four times that performance. And flat out there just isn't, okay? So what I would probably say on that is that to hit 4K maxed out settings at 60 FPS, not, e not even a 3090 is probably going to be able to do that unless you use DLSS. So I think even a 3080 or a 3090 is going to require DLSS to hit 4K 60 FPS. And that's, this is not gonna be the only game where that's been the case. Like games like Cyberpunk, um, not even a 3090 can hold a stable 60 FPS without DLSS. It's just not happening. So that's what I think uh, is going to be the case for 4K. And that's again, even without ray tracing on. Now with ray tracing on, we're jumping up to a 2070 for just 30 frames per second and only low ray tracing. Ouch. Now, I don't think it makes any sense to do 30 FPS gameplay if you have something like a 2070 just to turn on a little bit of ray tracing, which would probably be like shadows or something like that. So I'm just gonna say that's stupid, don't do it. Um, so we're just gonna mosey on right along to where it says a 3080 for 1080p 60 FPS. And this is where I, I, I'm saying that I think this chart is not taking DLSS into account. So I think what they're telling us is that the 3080 is gonna be required if you want native full RT 1080p 60 FPS, but you could then use DLSS to either get higher frame rates or to play at a higher resolution, okay? So for example, I think your RTX 2070 here could actually do 60 FPS on low ray tracing, but it's probably gonna require an aggressive DLSS implementation, which at 1080p is probably not worth it. Now the 3080, um, with high ray tracing 60 FPS, now I'm thinking the 3080 will do a decent job at 1440p, but you're gonna use DLSS to upscale for, uh, from 1080p. So that's like a DLSS quality, I think, is a 1080p to 1440p upscale. It might actually be down into balanced mode. That might be balanced, going 1080p to 1440p. Um, anyway, it might look okay, at least, if you really want to do ray tracing and you're, you're using a 3080 on a, on a 1440p screen. But my prediction here is that to do 4K with ray tracing maxed out and to get around 60 FPS, you're probably gonna have to have your DLSS set to basically ultra performance mode on an RTX 3080. Um, because we're gonna basically be needing to do a 1080p upscale to 4K, which like I said, is four times the pixels. So I'm pretty sure we're down to like a performance or ultra performance DLSS setting here. So you're basically just playing upscaled 1080p. Um, so this is gonna be one of those games where I'm basically gonna say, the ray tracing sounds like it's just the, I don't want good performance button. And some people might use it, but in my opinion, guys, you just don't need the, I don't want performance button. Just play the game rasterized. But hey, maybe we'll see some performance, uh, you know, comparisons and benchmarks. Maybe it won't be this bad. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Is this a game you're interested enough in for, uh, you know, want me to buy this one and benchmark it on my GPUs? Um, let me know. And I hope that you have an excellent day.